All right, 10 seconds, here we go. Dead Space Remake update. What you got for us? This is an audio showcase, I think they said. I love that shot. I can't wait for this. I love Dead Space. Hi Isaac. Go. All right. All right, guys. Bonjour à tous. Welcome to the second Dead Space for Dead Space. My name is Philip Cham. I'm joined by Raman Capasoriela, creative director, and Hi, Olivier Aslin, our audio director because today the focus of the stream is on audio. The sound effects, the music, the ambiences of the original Dead Space were astounding. It helped create an environment uh, that was super immersive for the players, and it was done extremely successfully. But Didier today will explain how we're leveraging the existing content to build an even more immersive experience and enhancing the content that was there in the initial game. Keep in mind that just like last time, Everything that you're gonna see today is gonna be uh, gyms. It's work in progress, so you're gonna see bugs, you're gonna see uh, missing animation, broken animation, uh, art that's placeholder, and that's all normal. So nothing is final? Nothing's final. Okay. We're showcasing content as it goes in to make sure that we're receiving feedback and we're able to show you all the game and hear what you think about what we're making. Smart, I like this so approach. This is the purpose and we want to see interactions on boards afterwards, so hopefully we're gonna be able to read a lot of comments about audio uh, following the stream. Today for the stream, uh, we're also lucky to have one of our community council members that's joining us. So we have Jack Patillo with us. Hey Jack, thank you for joining. Hey, hey guys, how you doing? Thank you so much for having me today. It's going to be a lot of fun. I'm very excited to represent the Community Council. For those of you who don't know, it's a, it's a group of people who have been huge Dead Space fans for a long time. And, uh, and we get to yell at you guys, and you can shape the game as, as to how you know, us hardcore Dead Space fans might, uh, might want it. You know? And I, I'm really, really excited today to see a final polished version of the game you've been promising us for a long time now. So it's going to be, it's going to be cool to see it all working and 100% finished, right? And Thank you for your contribution, polish, like right? always. Yes, we really got <laughs> <laughs> you got the message right on. All right, so All right, nailed it. Ali, let's get this started uh, with a first look at uh, the high-level pillars. First. Cool. So, hello, everyone. I'm uh, really thrilled and honored to represent the audio team today, uh, and I have the opportunity to uh, share with you uh, some of the work in progress. As developer, it's great to be able to share that early with the community. So uh, many thanks to everyone involved in making this happening. Uh, special thanks to the audio team. Okay, we've got a group of talented and very passionate designers. And um, as you will see with the upcoming uh, examples, they are really committed uh, to make that game an amazing and immersive experience. And uh, nice to have you uh, with us also. Uh, all right, here we go. <laughs> Absolutely. Hey, Ollie, real quick, before we get into it, so you're the audio director of the game. So what exactly does that mean? Does that mean like you, you're the one making the noises, you're, you're, you're playing the keyboards, you're making the squishy sounds and recording it? Like, like what, what is your role exactly as audio director? Because that could mean literally anything. But making squishy sound is always a part of our background for sure. But as a, an audio director, uh, my role <laughs> is more to collaborate with uh, Raman and Phil and also all the, 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 the core leads, and uh, working with the audio team too to make sure that uh, they, have, it's a facilitating role basically. So to help them being creative and okay. making sure that uh, 
they uh, stay focused. So that also of, uh, work towards like a Jira task and stuff like that and making presentation also. <laughs> and making games from these amount. Yeah, Al okay. always. Okay. always so, so live games. streaming is was uh, always part of your role? No, never. <laughs> <laughs> it's a first. <laughs> Pretty green with that. That's OK. It's going to be fine. So bad. Nice. a part uh, of our job, uh, Jack, is also to uh, to help the team understand what we're doing. I call that the audio evangelization. It's to talk about audio, talk about what we can do. Uh, part of it is to look at our pillars in the game. So before we start with the good, the, 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 the cool stuff, I always like to see what is our top, top process beyond the game. Where are we from? Okay. That's real video game under the hood. Like it's PowerPoint, Jira and stuff. So starting with the PowerPoint, <laughs> it's our daily job. That's the, the real stuff. Oh, oh God, it's PowerPoint. Also something <laughs> that comes back yeah. regularly in our talk to say, hey, we need to make sure that we stay focused. So how do we stay true to the original game? And for us, that means always start from there. Always look at the game first before we start a chapter. We play the chapter for the original. Before we start a feature, we look at the original data. Not only the data, but also how it was made behind uh, the hood, under the hood, or behind the door, depends. <laughs> but actually, uh, once you've got that, we put that in game the same way it was in Dead Space. And after that, uh, that allows us to understand what is the part that is working and what are the parts that needs to be bonified? To add a slight bonus, to add here and there a slight things uh, to make sure that we uh, create the best game possible. So always use the existing foundation and predefined soundscape, but build on it. Nice, nice. I, I appreciate that too, because I mean, obviously, like, there's a lot of Dead Space fans out there that are, are so passionate about the original. And I love that you're not just tossing it. You're like, that is like, that's the Bible. You know, you start there and then you work on like, how can we improve what we did, you know, all those, all those years ago. So uh, yeah, yeah I appreciate that a whole lot. I know a lot of other people do as well. Yeah, the soundscape of the, escape, the, the space is very solid in the first place. So we need to make sure that we stick to it as much as possible. So it's really uh, cool. So quickly, let's have a look at what we're gonna look at today. We're going to look at four features of Audio in uh, that space. We're going to start on the technical side of things with uh, what we call environmental audio, or how does the sounds is playing in 3D around Isaac. Then uh, we will have a quick glimpse at uh, Isaac tools, the dead space weapon. Uh, we're going to look at the alive system. The alive system is uh, the nonverbal reaction of Isaac. Uh, Isaac breathing, his heartbeat, and then finally, we're going to look at all of this together in game and ambient mood. So Excellent. I, I, I just got to say, I love the fact that it says ambiance over a severed hand floating through space covered in blood. <laughs> it's like, you know, it, it, like you go to like a, a massage parlor or something, it's like you hear like forest sounds and nice nature sounds or the ocean. And it's like, no, this is severed hands is our is our ambience going on here. And that's you guys have nailed it. Severed hands, <laughs> girl floating in zero G. Gets the tone right. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. That's right, that's the tone. And creepy singing. So, you know, that's that's it gets you into the mood immediately. That's the gig. All right, let's start oh, with sounds in space. So, sound in space, what do we mean by that just before we start? Uh, obviously, I talked about the environment in 3D. It's also the distance filtering, the obstruction, and the occlusion. So, Jean Francois, Mike, and Diego put together a video that will uh, explain and showcase our approach to our. Uh, Towards environmental audio. Let's watch the video. All right, here we go. Hi, everyone. This is Jeff Tremblay, lead sound designer and lead audio tech on Dead Space Remake. Today, we will be showing some of the technical improvements we have made for the remake. Later in this video, we will have Mike Dominion, technical sound designer, and Diego Marayo, senior audio programmer showing you in-game example, comparing between DS1 and the remake, as well as going over the technical implementation behind the scene. But before going to the details, I would take a bit of time to go over some of the basic audio concepts we will be referring in this video. Okay, cool. The occlusion is when a sound is behind a wall, a door or a large object that completely blocks the direct and reflected indirect signals. In this example, the sound cannot reach the listener, so we say that the sound is completely occluded or blocked. In 
in Dead Space, most walls are thick metal. So if the sounds are outside the room and the door is closed, so any exterior sounds would be silenced. In other cases, we will have glass windows on which we can tell the system to let through a little bit of the sound. So the result would be a muffled, filtered, direct signal and a muffled, indirect, diffuse signal. Nice. For the obstruction, the difference is that some of the signal could potentially reach the listener. In this example, the sound is behind an object or wall, but some indirect signal could reach the listener by bending around the corners of the object or by being reflected on the walls. The result will be a muffled direct signal and clear unfiltered indirect signal. The portals. We refer to portals as volumes we place on doors or placed at specific locations in the levels. And at runtime, the occlusion node made by Diego select the most logical portal to play the sound from. Along with sending the corrected position, it also sends the correct path distance for the sound to reach the listener. The result is a more accurate sound positioning and distance attenuation and filtering. Nice. All right, let's now listen to how these concepts applies in the context of the game. Let's start with reminding ourselves what the original Dead Space sounded like. Looking at the headbanger corridor, you can hear as soon as the door opens, the sound is coming from the right side of the screen. The sound should realistically be traveling down the corridor to Isaac, but standing here, you can actually hear the sound coming through the wall. Hell yeah. As we come around the corner, you will notice minimal audible changes to the sound position and obstruction. In the remake, there will be much more noticeable mix changes when standing here and the sound is not obstructed, to when I move around the corner and the sound is actually blocked. Now, let's take a look at our in-progress remake. You can hear the sound is now coming from the left, at the end of the corridor. The orange boxes you are seeing are portals we placed in the level and the lines between them are the path the sound is traveling to get to Isaac. Wow. I did a games dev course a, a few years ago so I love I love this technical stuff. I love understanding how games are made. We lock the sound to a third of the portal from the direction it is coming from to keep the correct directionality. God. We also use this same system for sound passing through to an attached room. Yeah, right, right. As the door closes, we start applying mix changes to the sound. When the door is fully closed, we move the sound source to the window and apply even heavier mix changes. That's impressive. Shit, yeah, it's travel it, yeah. Since this room has no window, we are cutting the sound completely as the door closes. Oh, that's so cool. Sounds are led through the doors, so not every sound will be called if we do not want them to be. Okay. 
The system also works vertically. Oh, that's good. The way the system works is by creating a map of the areas that are reachable by the player considering the surrounding openings like doors and windows. Then, when a new sound starts playing, we can check in the map we have previously generated if the sound is audible and what is the shortest path to Isaac. We update this map at regular intervals but much less often than the sounds themselves, because it's expensive and its data does not change very often. But having this information allows us to calculate a more physically accurate position of the sound very quickly. Excellent. That that is so cool, you guys. That I, I don't know if I don't know if uh, I, I'd never seen anything like that. I mean, I know I've played a whole lot of games before, but I've never really seen that those kind of tools being used in a game. I know they probably have in some other games, but how important was it for you guys to develop? that tool for De the Dead Space remake. Well, that was uh, one of the first discussion I think we had together as a production to say, uh, how do we uh, make sure that uh, we've got a 3D audio that stands uh, for uh, the current gen uh, platform. So uh, we really put a lot of effort and a lot of focus on how does the audio play back uh, inside the Ishimura and how are we gonna be able to filter that to make sure that one thing that is really important also in terms of gameplay into Dead Space in the experience, it's the physical reality of that world. That the Ishimura feels like an actual place. You have all those physics-based powers, you can cut the necromorph, and all of those things needs to feel real. And one thing we wanted to enhance on audio was to give the same type of approach to the physics of the actual sounds and how they reverberate on the in the ship, etc., to really make that place uh, something living in which you can believe. Nice, nice. I, I mean, I'm, I'm just excited by like all of these new things going into the game that I never thought of before. Now, uh, I know like one, one thing, Ali. So, like when I hear a car drive down the street, I can always hear the base of the car before anything else. Is that something that you guys can do in the game? Like with, with this tool, where you can actually make it where like certain frequencies hit you sooner rather than later, or like they travel further than other frequencies? Yeah, we've got the choice for each a sound or group of sound to apply a certain value to the obstruction and, uh, and occlusion, as uh, Mike mentioned in the video, but also to uh, filter through distance differently based on the fre frequency spectrum. So we can apply a curve that will mimic how sounds will be um, influenced by the distance. So wait till you hear the Leviathan growling in the depth of the issue. <laughs> oh, fucking hell, the Leviathan. Yes. Oh, man, I, I'm just, I, I'm pumped to see everything you guys are working on right now. And it's just like, even, even something like, I would never think about that stuff, about like the audio occlusion. And I know, you know, like, is that something like, like Phil and Roman, is that something you guys are working on to use to like maybe manipulate a player where like they hear something coming from one side, but they're actually being attacked from another side. Like I know like head fakes are always been a big thing in Dead Space. Is that something you guys are going to take advantage of? Uh, definitely something that we want to use to to make the player believe something's coming in a threat in a certain direction. Uh, so so it's more levers in our toolbox to make sure that we're able to surprise the player uh, and, and catch him off guard. Fantastic. Very very cool. All right. All right, well, I, I'm, I'm excited to see more. What, what else we got next? Right, let's talk a bit about, uh, we mentioned it at the beginning. Yes, the plasma cutter. Let's see that baby in action. Space, most of the weapons are not necessarily classic weapons. Uh, they are more like uh, tools. Because Isaac, as an engineer, is basically using those tools to uh, go through his journey. So our main challenge here is how do we keep the personality of the weapon of the original but add distinctive details that will make uh, them, those weapons, feel like uh, tools, like engineering uh, elements. So uh, everything you will see right now, it's based on that train of thought. We've got two prototypes. Once again, it's a prototype. We did uh, collaborate with uh, Stefan and Paul from Sweet Just Justice for this redesign. Uh, and both examples, you will first hear uh, Dead Space 1 original and then our uh, remodel prototype. So if everyone is okay with that, 
So once again, it's really work in progress for both for everything, visual, VFX, models, especially animation for the weapon. It's early, there's a lot missing, so Yeah, that's fine. Difficult. This is all alpha stuff. Hello, I am Michael Dominic, the technical audio artist on Dead Space. I will be showing you the in progress plasma cutter and pulse rifle today. Ooh, and the like plasma pulse, pulse rifle. Plasma cutter, my favorite. We'll what we are remaking. Now let's have a listen to where we are at with our updated version. Nice. Ooh. When we are designing a weapon, we approach them in many different layers. All of the red and blue boxes outlined in this picture represent another layer that is being played on each shot of the weapon. Now let's take a listen a to some of these layers one at a time so we can really hear each element that's being played. Yeah, there it is. I like it. That's all we have for the plasma cutter today, but let's take a sneak peek at comparing the original pulse rifle with our in progress version. Yes, I love the pulse rifle. Yeah, you gotta get those panic shots off. Oh, that sounds much, much meatier. That's got some heft to it. You, mu you muted, Jack. Yeah, Jack. That's, that's what, 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 sorry, guys. I apologize. But <laughs> what, what does Isaac have against those walls? He seems very upset at those walls. Did they do something to him or talk smack about his mom or something? He, he was hearing the necromorphs on the other side because of... Uh, <laughs> Just being paranoid. <laughs> Just shoot a hole right through it. Now... Now, Ali, th that's that's fascinating to me. The idea of, of so many layers of audio just for one little sound bite. Uh, is, is there ever a point where it's like there's too much audio, like we have too many layers going on right here, or is it kind of just keep throwing things at it? No, no, it's really a point. Uh, we always reach a moment where uh, even for a single feature like a weapon or for the entire mix, where the, the amount of frequency is too much in one area or the other. So it's how do we mix together uh, all the, freque the, fre the audible frequency spectrum of each element and make sure that they uh, have a purpose in the overall uh, view of the game. So it's about how do we mix your uh, element individually or at the granular level, but how do they interact with the world? Uh, that's that's cool and, and like it's fascinating to me that like that the the you know the plasma cutter all the weapons will sound different based on the location you're shooting them in right yeah because that's basically what we're trying to do if you're in a big room you will have like not only the weapon but everything that uh, the weapon will cause uh, impact on the walls or impact on necromorph to have the uh, reflection and the reverb of each uh, individual unit 
No, that's cool. And uh, one thing I love that you guys have done now, you could really tell in the layers, was the fact that you have the mechanical components of the plasma cutter. You can like, you hear like that physical, like the metal scratching on metal and stuff, as well as the kind of more sci-fi, like the pew-pew type noises and stuff as well. And it's because of that, like thinking about that, usually, you know, you have to base something on something else. You kind of get a reference point at some point. It, what what do you have to reference? Is there anything that exists on planet Earth that you could reference as a plasma cutter that fires like bolts like this, or is it just something you've made up? Well, it's obviously something that we uh, look at at first. We look at Dead Space. We try to isolate the iconic element of the plasma cutter to make sure that it still sounds like the original weapon somehow. But after that, it's adding element here and there. Uh, obviously, we look a lot, lot at uh, different tools, all those mechanical elements that uh, make the, the plasma cutter turn, uh, add those d little details here and there to make them feel like they are mechanical, they are turning, it's actually like uh, creating something. We have a lot of discussion and really serious design meetings about <laughs> thinking about how would it sound to actually use a power drill in someone's arms, and what would be that sound and that feeling? <laughs> so it's, no, it's a real, a real serious job. You know? <laughs> Bring in the intern. Let's see what it sounds like. Come on, guys. <laughs> that sounds horrifying. Now, I, you, now you've talked about uh, a couple times throughout the stream here about going back and using some of the material from the very first game. Are you using actual like sound files from the first game, or is everything being completely remade? Or how, how does that work? Uh, our first. Uh, idea there is always start with the original so we dig and we did a lot of archaeological uh, search into uh, the, the game data but not only the game data the backup that the team had at the time we look at uh, how they build stuff we've got lots of original recording original source so it's always to look at both say what we, can we uh, extract from that because sometimes we don't have everything we've got only the end result and is the end result is uh, what we need necessarily, or we need to, uh, to to look at redoing something that is similar. So it really depends of the of the feature itself, or and and the result of our uh, of our, our searching. But it's also that is so cool. it's a great way for us to have a solid starting point that stays true to the original, and from there be able to see and determine where do we want to enhance the experience. And and on the audio, it's the same thing that we're doing. Amazing. So one place I, I love the idea of also want to using invest. using archaeology, like the idea of like an archaeologist of video games, and you know, wearing a fedora and a bullwhip, going through and pulling out all the uh, the old files. That's that's exactly pretty rad. Something you don't think about, but I guess you know, I've got hard drives I know around here that are you know probably ten years old that I don't know what's on them. So I imagine that was a huge process with this. That was a fun process too, because it's always cool to see like, hey, okay, you find stuff. Sometimes you find gold when you do that too. You find things that you didn't know was still existing. So it's really an interesting uh, process for sure. That's so cool. All right, oh, so let's move on actually to the next component, uh, Ali, for the live system. So uh, we're gonna put ourselves in Isaac boots, as I mentioned. Uh, a live system is the breathing of uh, Isaac and his heartbeat. And we're gonna look at that with uh, on a video with our uh, senior sound designer, Terry Calico. All right, cool. My name is Terry Calico, and I'm the senior VO designer on Dead Space. In the original Dead Space, Isaac's breathing and heartbeat was such an integral part of the player's connection with Isaac yep. in building immersion and emphasizing the horror experience. Breathing is a huge part of Dead Space and horror films in general that enhance the feeling of being alone and vulnerable. For Dead Space, we're looking back at the core functionality of the original and not only bringing that experience forward, but we're finding ways we can improve it to a level that exceeds expectations in today's generation of games. In the original Dead Space, you would hear Isaac's breathing change and heartbeat ramp up over time when sprinting, when low on health, low on oxygen, during combat, and spike for jump scares or scripted events. All of that will be there. A couple Good. of improvements, for example. In the original, when Isaac was sprinting or injured, you would hear additional grunts to emphasize his level of exertion play simultaneously over top of the bass breathing rate. Oh yeah. Exertions such as melee and stomp also played over top of the breathing rather than interrupt it. Oh yeah. If you listened carefully, you were hearing two voices at the same time. The exerted breaths 
didn't interject the base breathing. For dead space, we're building a system that supports transitioning respiratory rates through fatigue and low health states seamlessly. Nice. As another example, in the original, when Isaac was gasping for air while running out of oxygen, exiting the vacuum of space or using an oxygen refill would instantaneously and unnaturally revert Isaac back to a calm breathing state as if nothing had happened. Exiting vacuum. <laughs> space, you can expect to hear yeah. Isaac catch his breath as he recovers from a lack of oxygen. Let's have a listen to this prototype in game with some placeholder content. Okay, yeah. Much more realistic. I like it. And as Isaac catches his breath, you hear it transition back smoothly into the base breathing cycle. For Dead Space, we're building what is called the Alive System. It encompasses all components of Isaac's breathing and heart rate, vocal exertions, and dialogue, influenced by a variety of driving gameplay features. The limbic system is the part of the brain that controls behavioral and emotional responses, such as anxiety and fear. When you watch a horror movie or play a scary game, the limbic system can trigger a release of adrenaline into the body, causing a physical response, such as increased heart rate. In our game, adrenaline is derived from various values driven by external factors that have a direct influence on Isaac's heart rate BPM. External factors that act as adrenaline are the combat difficulty value, scripted events and jump scares, Isaac's fatigue level, Isaac's oxygen level, and Isaac's health. We want Isaac to reflect how anyone would physically react in the scenario he's placed in, and vice versa, use that to influence the player to feel the same response. For Isaac's scripted dialogue lines, where the player maintains full control of Isaac, we will have three variations of Excuse each me. line to pick from based on his current state. A normal version, a fatigued version, and an injured version. Let's have a listen to how Isaac's fatigue level or being in a low health state can impact Isaac's scripted dialogue in game. Nicole? It's me. Nicole? It's me. Nicole? me making up nice. Isaac's vitals are his heart rate respiratory rate oxygen level and health as isaac is 43 years old i studied average heart and respiratory rates for his age group at different levels of fitness to land on isaac's base heart rate of 70 bpm to build up from as heart rate increases his respiratory rate increases as well i broke down the respiratory rates into seven breathing cycles mapped out across seven correlating heart rate BPM zones. Each cycle also has fatigued and injured modifiers. All right, let's have a listen to how Isaac's breathing is behaving in game. One thing to note, the breathing and exertion samples that you'll be hearing in game are not gunner right. These are placeholder samples that we recorded for testing all of this functionality out in game as we were building it. And here on screen is our Alive monitor. This is some debug information that we've put together to see Isaac's current breathing cycle, his heart rate, what his breathing state is, if he's inhaling or exhaling, what his fatigue level is, his oxygen level, his health, and the current combat intensity. And if we have Isaac sprint here, uh, over time you'll start to see his fatigue level increase. And when Isaac's fatigue level gets past a certain threshold, you'll start to hear fatigued breaths, exerted breaths, start to mix in with his regular bass breathing rate. Excellent. Amazing the level of detail they can actually get to now in gaming.
I find running on the spot knackering too, Isaac. You're fine. And when Isaac stops sprinting, you'll see his uh, fatigue levels start to go down, his heart rate will come down, and his respiratory rate will slow down as well. Very good. I know I'm not talking much, just because I'm just trying to take this all in. Here we have Isaac in a very low health state. He's injured. And when he moves around in this state, we start to introduce uh, little winces of pain mixed into his breathing cycle. <sighs> And what's really great about the way we've built this system is that Isaac can be in both an injured state and fatigued state at the same time. So hearing those injured winces, those fatigued breaths mixed in with his regular breathing actually sounds quite natural. Nice. Wrapping up the Alive system, we have exertions. These are single one-off exertion events that interrupt or interject between base breathing loops. For example, melee, stomp, hit reactions, and death. Exertions, for the most part, will end in exhales and restart the breathing loop back up on an inhale. However, the breathing system will have the flexibility to have the option to start the breathing loop back up on an exhale or inhale, depending on the content. Thanks for listening. I hope you enjoyed this. Fascinating. Into some of the things we're doing with audio. I'm looking forward to Isaac come alive. seeing how that alive system can be pushed. That is wild. <laughs> the amount of work and thought to go into. You're developing a, a hypothalamus for a video game character. That's that's incredible. And I got to say, Isaac should probably maybe start the couch to 5K program. He needs to work on that that stamina build up, I think, right there. Now, now Ollie. Do you have any idea how many uh, like breaths are in this game? Obviously, there's different variations of it, but like how many inhale exhales do you think have been recorded or are going to be recorded for uh, for Dead Space? Yeah, as uh, Terry mentioned in the video, uh, right now it's all temp asset that we recorded, uh, but we're expecting uh, Gunner to be out of breath anytime soon. <laughs> because that's, there's that's a lot not going to be easy actually, because he's in a really, really good shape. The guy has a, oh, yeah? has a real, uh, yeah, has a real childhood. <laughs> <laughs> who gets to, who gets to tell Gunner that he has to do three versions of every single line of dialogue in the game? Does he know that yet, or is that something you're going to be like, here's the script and the second version of the script and the third version of the script? Uh, uh, have fun. <laughs> see you in a few days. That was part of the deal, actually. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> We're going to make him out of breath when he's going to record. He's going to have fun on the treadmill. <laughs> okay, that's that's good, man. That's that is wild. Like that, I, that's stuff that you never think about, and it's one of those things that when you guys do it in such a, a high quality fashion, it you, it you don't think about it. It just feels natural, and you've done such a good job with that so far. And just this early look, so I can only imagine what it's going to be like when it's you know final polished version of the game, which we're very close to, right? Right, gents? We're this almost done, almost ready? <laughs> Not yet. Uh, Soon. Okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it's still all pre-alpha, uh, and, and yeah, there's still a lot of work left, but but it's heading in the right direction, that's for sure. Okay. Yeah, so Absolutely. I mean, everything I, everything I, we've seen, seen, like you know, I, I've been excited to see like the progress that we've seen. So from the, the community team, we've been watching this since before announcement, and just to see how far it's made over the course of the months we've been a part of it has been incredible and I'm, I'm psyched that you guys are showing off some of the stuff that we get to see early to the larger community because dead space fans are rabid and uh, any any <laughs> little n like nugget of morsel we can get is uh, is very exciting and so true I'm, I'm this is true or are, are sharing this with the, with the larger crowd so ooh, yeah. <laughs> now what, what, what do we got next what do we got next I'm, i want to i want to see more let's share a bit more then a bit more then then we're gonna go uh, in game anytime soon but just before we go in game uh, we're going to quickly talk about uh, one of the elements that is super important, obviously, for the entire Dead Space experience. Uh, it's the music. Okay, it provides a very amazing uh, effect in Dead Space 1. The score from Jason Graves uh, is amazing, and it was well praised by both critic and fan. It used dark, organic, uh, orchestral music that dynamically 
change at runtime based on gameplay parameters. Uh, super effective at setting up the mood of being responsive to specific game stimuli. So for us, I bring back the uh, pillars that we talked about from the beginning to like, demonstrate that they are applied all over uh, the place uh, for us. Uh, what does it mean to uh, be true to the original? It means uh, that we're gonna reuse both the way the music was playing, but also the original score. All right. Once again, as for all the other features, we're looking for element that uh, we would like to uh, add as a bonus, as an enhanced experience. So for that, we would like the music of that space to evolve with the narrative, to change, to support the story. And for that, we're working with our composer, uh, Trevor Guricus. Uh, and fun, fun fact, we just out of a recording two weeks ago. We did a, a cool recording, and we've got a little glimpse for you coming up. Perfect. Oh, there it is. <laughs> Perfect. Why are violins the scariest instrument that exists? Like, that's so free. It's like, uh, it's true. They are. It starts crawling because it's like, uh, I don't like this. Something's going on. Oh, there's clearly something about the strings that makes uh, this a bit creepy right away. Uh, that's for sure. And the way that has been used there. Uh, I think it's the pitch of the violins. Bad, but we've got other uh, tools in our back pocket to scare people with music. We've got uh, plenty of little things coming up. And I can't, I can't wait to see more of that. And I, I love the fact that you have different elements of it, so you can manipulate that and you know play different things at different times to really mess with your brain. That's, yeah, that's very, very cool. Clearly what you just saw is uh, the string section, but we've got also, uh, like, we can record a brass, the perk separately. And after that, it's the same way as the weapon, basically. We re record in layers, so we can play back in layers in certain places. You will hear only certain elements. And after that, dynamically, uh, when the players are playing, we put all those things together and make them fluctuated with the gameplay. That, that, that's so awesome. Okay, well, speaking of putting everything together, oh. I think now everyone wants to see maybe some like gameplay like all of this kind of squished together in, in a yeah. live uh, demo perhaps is that something we can do i guess that's where we are now that's definitely where we're gonna switch and again the same old disclaimers right everything's final jack that's it 100 no. percent <laughs> final <laughs> polish <laughs> ready to go ship. everything that we're showing it out. again today it's first pass in terms of visuals animation even lighting etc there's Still a long way to go before uh, polishing and finishing the, the game experience. But still, we wanted to give you a glimpse at where we are today and how do all those elements we talk about today actually converge together to participate to enhance the Dead Space experience. Oh, here we go. Even for pre-alpha, this looks great. God. Yeah, I can hear it. Hear a necromorph. Oh, it's this fucking room. No, I don't trust that vent. You bastard. I'm getting all anxious again. That's, that's the beauty of dead space. Don't walk towards the vent. Oh, nice. Cut the node. Whoa! Reload. Yeah, I'd... Stomp it! You gotta do the stomp. Always, always do the stomp. 
Oh my god, look at this. Even in pre-alpha, it looks amazing. The shadows and the lighting. Wow. <laughs> That's no, you can't I, stop there. I, I, I need it. more. It's, it's so great. I love watching developers do playthroughs because you guys do those slow pans and look arounds that are very dramatic and very, very pretty. Where meanwhile, I'm going to be playing the game just, just running from spot to spot, trying not to get murdered. So uh, I, I appreciate that. That looks that looks incredible. Congratulations, guys. And uh, now, now we, we heard a whole lot of stuff going on there. I think I even heard like the violins at one point. Do you know how many layers of audio across gunfire and like just the general creak of the ship and music like how many layers of audio can be playing at one time oh there's a lot of layer uh, that could play at runtime and this is the magic of dynamic mixing right there is like uh, we establish as developer we establish rule in which like hey when those conditions apply then certain things will change dynamically at runtime so in the end it's the player that will provide the end result so we're trying to just applying certain rules that say like in, when those conditions arrive, then this will lower uh, 3 dB, the, the music will rise a certain amount. So it depends really of the gameplay. Uh, so there's a lot of layers. So we need, we don't have the choice. As I explained earlier, it's like the frequency range is that uh, wide. And uh, when lots of frequency just add on, it's, it, it, at, at one point it's too much. So we need to choose uh, what, uh, where you put your focus basically. It depends on what's on screen, how close to the player they are, all this kind of thing. Man, I, I never I mean I imagine there's like a lot of math in there too. I never thought math would be a big part of audio, but I guess so. It's it's absolutely incredible and just the the, the way that all layers together and the music and how it all comes it's just it's so well done. And it adds such it's ad adds such a cool element to the game and uh and just immediately just immerses you in the whole thing and it, it's it's fantastic. And now just the idea of like that room and the just the general noise of it. Ali, do you go to sleep at night and that's all you can hear? Like, are you just surrounding yourself with this kind of audio? Like, do you, do you did you spend a lot of time in submarines? Are you used to this at this point? Yeah, he hasn't been sleeping since we started the project. So. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, actually, uh, obviously we're man, passionate that, it people, is so, cool. uh, so uh, there's something that we always think about. So it happened many times that you hear a sound and saying that would be perfect for that feature, but that's. That's a part uh, of our life, and it's really cool to have the chance to work on that project that uh, drive that passion. So it's really nice. Amazing stuff. All right. Well, well it's, uh, it's, uh, everything I've heard so far sounds fantastic. Okay, thank, yeah, you thank you very you much. Uh, like, kudos to everybody on the team, to Montreal and everywhere in the world for, uh, for their hard work. Yeah. Still a long way to go, but... Uh, Definitely, we need, we need to do a huge shout out to the team. Uh, we have... Uh, a lot of people that are extremely passionate in the work, uh, and, and it shows uh, when we're starting to put all the pieces together. We only saw a glimpse of that work today, uh, but there's a lot more coming, and it's actually something that I wanted to say today that we're gonna do another dev stream in just a couple uh, I, I, weeks uh, slash months, early May. Uh, we're gonna do a follow-up to this dev stream uh, nice. with an art live stream. Yeah, I see your hand, Jack, I'll get to you. Uh, but just like, we're, we're gonna do an art live stream in just a couple of weeks, early May, uh, where we're gonna have Mike Yazijan, uh, our art director, that's gonna be uh, with us, uh, having a first look at art. Um, and, and uh, well, I think Ollie's just set the bar pretty high, so great work, Ollie. Uh, and now I'll, I'll get to your question, Jack. <laughs> Uh, quite, hi, I'm Jack down here in Austin. I know you guys are up there. Uh, you said like we're we're getting close. Can you give us a general range, maybe, or as close as you can get to like when when we can get our hands on? I know this is the gold final version of the game we've been watching now, but like maybe the final final version of the game when you're ready to put it on shelves. When when can we see Dead Space in our in our house? The final 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 version of it. Uh, so, uh, well. We want to make sure that we're we're in a place where the game that we're going to deliver uh, is going to be um, well, delivering on the expectations of fans, and, and that's what's most important. So right now, we'll say uh, early next year. Uh, we we have a date in mind. Uh, we want to make sure that everything converges for this. Um, we still have we're actually just a couple of weeks away from being able to do our first full walkthrough of the game. We're not even on fire. Uh, exactly. Still we're still pre-alpha, uh, but we believe that we're going to be in a solid position. 
uh, to be able to do the proper polish, the proper debug, and, and to meet the date that we have in mind. Uh, but for now, I'll say early next year, Jack, to your question. Nice. Good. Right, take right. take your time. Some nebulous in the future, Take your so time. I appreciate that. All right. So, well, thank you, Jack. Thank you, Ollie. Thank you, Roman, for participating participating in Dev Stream. Thank you, um, Thank you. Uh, I, I hope that you have enjoyed what you saw today. Uh, and, I have. And, uh, everything that we've showcased. Please participate in comments. We want to see your thoughts. We want to see uh, uh, what we did right, <laughs> what we did wrong, hopefully not too much, uh, and, and uh, hear what you think about the game. Uh, and so thanks a lot, everyone, and uh, hope you have a great, fantastic day. Fan, fantastic. I know it's all pre-alpha stuff, but uh, I'm, I love geeky shit like this. I, I did a games design course. So I, I love learning about what goes into games. Early next year, I'm good with that. I, want, I just want them to take their time to make sure they get all of the elements right. I'm confident now that the game is in the right hands with Motif. I cannot wait for this. A couple of weeks, maybe a month to the next one. So obviously, I'll be doing reactions to that as well. But for now, I'm going to sign off here. Thank you very much for taking the time to watch this, guys. If you enjoyed it, like, subscribe, ding that bell. I've been Sigma Later. This has been the Dead Space live stream. And I'll catch you next time. Take care now.